few minutes, I would want us to share God's word. I know you are here because all of us, we have started on a journey of faith. And in fact, heaven is, just, is a promise. We are on our way there, true? And if you ever get to heaven, it is because you have had one wrong wait since the day you believed. You have been waiting for heaven, waiting for heaven. We'll keep on waiting for heaven. A good brother told me one day, I waited for Jesus yesterday, he didn't come. I'll wait for him today. If he doesn't come today, I'll still wait for him tomorrow. So going to heaven is one great wait. If you believe it, say amen. amen. And Jesus kept, kept on reminding us this message. And no wonder, even in, in, one, in all the Gospels, there is this uh, parable of the ten virgins. And there is a comparison of two sets. The five wise ones and the five foolish ones. The five wise ones waited all through. But the five foolish ones waited up to a certain point and they gave up. Meaning, while we are going to heaven on this journey of faith, God gives you many more small weights. The promise of heaven is one wrong one. But there are many small weights, waitings in your life this morning. And I know this morning I'm talking to brothers and sisters who are waiting on God for different things. You are waiting for God, for a new job, for a great business, for a spouse, for a child, for a, your career growth, waiting on God on, for your health, many things. You have told God about it. He has not yet answered, so you are still waiting. Meaning waiting is, one, is a part of a Christian life. There is no way you will be a Christian while you are not waiting. No wonder we... Um, there is this song we say, watching and waiting, looking above. So watching and waiting, waiting is an integral part of our walk. And the Bible says in Psalms 27 verse 14, maybe you can project it for us. Psalms 27 verse 14 in the Amplified. Uh, we can read in that one and then you give me the one I, I asked. Wait on the Lord. Let's read together. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You are not being given an option. Yeah. There was another one here. Now what was I doing on this side? No, I've forgotten that there is this. Wait and hope. Fall and expect the Lord. Be brave. And of good courage. And let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes. Wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. Meaning waiting. Let it remain there. Waiting upon the Lord. This morning I can echo back this message. Wait and hope. For and expect the Lord. This morning, whom are you expecting to come and sort you out? Some of us we are waiting on the Lord. Maybe you are waiting on somebody else. But another singer said, The arm of flesh will fail you. A human being will fail you, but God will not fail you. No wonder David continued and said. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. This morning, if there is anything I can tell you, there are those issues. They are as different as we are, but I know you are hoping for something. There is something you prayed for this morning. I hope you did pray. No, the other day the Lord reminded me. You have seen these advertisements where the father and the children, they are all, bit, they are all fighting the mosquitoes in the house. Daddy, is a mosquito like this. Eh? Then the mother comes in with a what? 
I can tell you not baby. No, it won't be under the blanket. And some of these revelations, you will get them as you seek the mind of God regarding your issue. Ephesians 6.18 in NIV. Ephesians 6.18 Thank you. Let's read together. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. While you wait, you know the kind of prayer you are praying this morning. You know the issue you are waiting upon. And asking the Lord to show up strong on your behalf. The Bible encourages you this morning to make any kind of request. And while you wait, convert waiting time on meditating on who God is and what he wants to do in us and through us. Waiting time should also be a moment to evaluate your motives, your values, priorities, goals, and objectives in life. Praise the Lord. It is, as, it is while you wait that God will convict you on some issues you are waiting upon. Did you know it's while you are waiting that sometimes you change your prayer points? As you evaluate your goals, as you evaluate and as you allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you, you change even your prayer, the version of your prayer. A few lessons on waiting. Number one, Rest in God and be still. Did you know waiting upon God is a, it's like it's a bump. It's like you expected to pause and listen. Some of us are so fast. Some of us have not begun us. Waiting upon God is a moment when God is telling you it is not at your, at your timing. It is at my timing. You have told me. I have heard the Bible says that his ears are not deaf. His heart is not shortened. It will save you. So why? It's a matter of timing. And that is where testing comes in. And you need to be so conscious of what you are doing while you wait. And this morning, I want to encourage you to rest in God and be still. And we read in Lamentation 3.26, it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. This morning I want to encourage you, listening to me, wait quietly for the Lord. And you know what? Waiting silently means it's no longer you on the driver's seat. It is the Lord. And you know, sometimes the season of waiting brings that gift One writer by the name Helen Luke cautions that without significant time to be still, and I want you to note this, without significant times to be still, we extinguish the possibility of growth and walk backwards. When you want to bypass waiting, you are extinguishing your possibility of growth and instead you walk backwards. And the paradox is, we achieve our deepest progress standing still. You know it's against the norm that when you are standing still, that is when you are progressing. Because God is at work in your life. Therefore, convert waiting time to meditating on who God is. What he, is what he wants you to do. Yes, wait upon the Lord. 
Number two, something else you need to do while you wait. Resist the temptation to get ahead of God. There are many instances in the Bible of people who decided to go ahead of God and it was a disaster. One of them is Saul. Samuel had taught him to wait. And the Bible says he waited and he thought Samuel, the, the, the prophet is taking too long. And he decided to burn the incense. And when he had just finished, Samuel showed up. It was a disaster. This morning, could you be in a disaster because you decided to run ahead of God? Thank God you are listening to me because you can make a turnaround and tell God you want to go at his pace. The children of Israel, Moses had gone up to the mountain and they thought he had taken too long. And they confronted Aaron and asked for a God. And by the time Moses came down, they were worshipping something else, not God. Could that be you got tired of waiting and right now as I'm talking to you, you are worshipping something else or somebody else? I'm so glad this morning that you set aside everything else to come to the house of God that we may, might break the bread of life. I'm talking about the bread of life. There is life in the word of God. And you know, you put a margin to the things you wanted to do today so that you may not marginalize God. Putting God into perspective. When you are tired of waiting, you start, there is a tendency of trying to do other things which you should not be doing. Therefore, resist the temptation to get ahead of God. There are many examples. Sarah had been promised a son. At some point, she got tired. And she offered her maiden to the husband. And you know the sad bit about get, running ahead of God? The consequences are not only disastrous to you, they are also disastrous to the immediate family members and even to future generations. We still have effects of Sarah's action that day. It brought about the birth of Ishmael, and you know the consequences. Therefore, when you decide not to wait and run ahead of God, sometimes you force your family to go through such a hard time just because you decided to run ahead of God. This morning, I want to encourage you listening to me. Wait on the Lord. Amen. Because it is good to wait on the Lord. Amen. I want us to read um, in the message version Romans chapter 8 verse 25 in the message version. Let's read together. But the longer we wait, the larger we become. And the more joyful our expectancy. 26. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's spirit is right alongside, helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out for our wordless size, our aching grounds. 27. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, knows our pregnant condition, and keeps us present before God. Verse 28. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked out into something good. Verse 29, God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the rights of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. 
the sun stands fast in the light of humanity, he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. 30. After God made the decision of what his children should be like, he followed it up by calling people by name. After he called them by name, he set them on a solid basis with himself. And then, after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. I want you to know this morning that you are not alone in the waiting. We have just learned that the Holy Spirit is right beside you, doing that which you are unable to do. So next time you are waiting upon the Lord and you feel like giving it up, call upon the start by helper, the Holy Spirit. He will help you go through the waiting. Therefore, this morning we can resist the temptation of running ahead of God. Number three, as I try to wind up, remember God's promises while you wait. Remember God's promises while you wait. The Bible says in Isaiah 30 verse 18, blessed are all who wait for him. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall learn and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Don't you see there's a contradiction? We are talking about standing still and we are talking about they shall walk and not faint. Meaning, where we read, it is in the waiting, we grow bigger. Even in the human, when a mother is expecting a, day, a baby, you don't decide that on month three that you want your baby. Because it is while waiting for the full time of full term of nine months that you get bigger and bigger. And at nine months, you get a full, full grown baby. It is in the waiting that God is at work. And no longer you are getting bigger and larger. The natural helps us to understand the supernatural. It is for your own good that you wait. And no wonder the Bible says we shall walk and not faint. God acts on our behalf, on behalf of those who wait for him. Those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Psalms 37 verse 9. And we read at the beginning, the Lord is good to those who wait for him. Give God an opportunity to be good to you by waiting for him. I don't know whether you have ever waited for somebody and you really needed the, the person. Maybe she was bringing something very important to you. And just when you give up and go, the person later tells you, I arrived there at 12 and you left at 11.55. How do you feel? Remember you are the one in need. You are the one waiting on God. How do you feel? Oh God, this morning I want to encourage you. Don't give up. He is about to show up. He is faithful. He is able. And he desires to do you good. And while you wait, call to mind all the promises God has given regarding the issue you are waiting God, waiting upon God. Read them around. Speak them to yourself and to others. Memorize them. Make faith-filled declaration of the expected outcomes. Faith-filled declarations. Some of us make declarations which are faithless. I'm talking about faith-filled declarations. About that issue you are waiting upon God. Call to mind as many answers as possible God has answered. And let them build your faith. Keep Tell yourself, he did it the other time I was sick. He will do it today. He can and he will because he is God. Call to mind. Build a case before yourself and the enemy. Remind the enemy, God did it the other day. I had no school fees. The last minute he came through for me. He did it then. He will do it now. Because he is changeless, he is ageless, he is God. 
intentional. And you know what? When you start being thankful, you still wake up from that knees, from your knees, maybe not with the answer, but with the right heart. With the peace of mind. Ready to move on. Hence the need to charge the atmosphere. And some of the chargers is, is a thankful heart, an expectant heart, faith-filled moments of declarations as you tell God he is good. You, it's a moment to remind God how much you know about his character. God, I know you are a faithful. God, I know you are able. God, I know you are on my side. God, I know you will do it. God, you did it for brother so and so. Oh, what you have done for others, you can do it for me. And I can assure you as you wake up from there, you feel like you already have got it. And that is the walk of faith we are talking about. It is as you make those confessions that the word of God transforms your mind and reminds you that God is a covenant keeping God. He will come through for you. He will do it for you. He loves to do it. It is his delight. He rejoices in doing you good. And number four, redeem the time. If you are going to be in a season of waiting, like you are maybe this morning, make the most out of it. Don't miss what God has for you by fretting. Saying yes to God always brings joy in the end. So choose joy by faith. You know some of us, we delay our stay in the waiting because we are not teachable. And it is in the waiting that you tell God, let me learn my lesson so fast that I may be through with this paper of waiting. Praise the Lord. God never waits anything when we submit to him. God can make something beautiful out of ashes, something joyful from mourning, and something praiseworthy from despair. God will grow us in the process if we stick close to him. Wait upon the Lord. And as we read, and maybe you can read it again, Romans 8, 24. In the message version, it really blessed my heart. I'm just waiting up. Romans 8, 24, 25. That is why waiting does not diminish us. Any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. We are enlarged in the waiting. We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us. You may not be seeing what is enlarging you, but the longer we wait, the larger we become. And the more joyful our expectancy. This morning, whatever you are waiting upon, allow God, allow it to enlarge you. Amen. While you are waiting, it is not fun. When you are carrying a baby, it is not funny. Yeah. Let me tell you. And you congratulate us. Praise God. But can I tell you the truth of the matter? Imagine some, it's not funny. Sometimes you don't feel like talking, sometimes you don't feel like many things. But you know what? After nine months, oh, there is celebration. And this morning I want to talk to somebody. Your morning is about to come. No wonder the Bible compares the waiting, like the way the shepherds wait for the morning. You know a morning is sure. Have you ever slept and the morning refused to come? Have you? It is so sure. And I want to tell you, God will show up. That one is for sure. He will show up. And he has got many ways, not in your style, but he will show up anyway. And you know what? Bottom line, it is you who will be blessed. It is you who will have grown. It is you who will be enlarged. It is you who will be excited. It will be for your own good. Therefore, 
for this morning, let us choose to wait patiently for the Lord. In the waiting, we allow the grace of God to teach us many things. Jude says that the grace of God teaches us to say no to many things. It, in the waiting, it's a very good opportunity to say no to many rights of the enemy. For example, he wants you to pray victim. Let me tell you, the Bible says that the devil is the father of all rights. He's such a master in his in his trade, that you even lie about God himself. He will lie to you. You know what? God did not even hear you. He does, these days he has decided he will not be hearing you. If you are not careful, you enter into that trap. And he will give you evidence. But as far as God is concerned, he just wanted you to wait. And then he will show up. We rest in what God is. And it's like God is telling us, wait because I am reliable. Wait on me because I'll not let you down. What I am is all that you need, that need matter to you. For there lie your hope and your peace. I will do what I will do and it will come to right at last. But how I do it, it is my secret. Trust and be not afraid. A.W. Tozer wrote those words. That while you are waiting, it's like God is telling you, wait. I am, what I am, is all that need matter to you. For there lie your hope and your peace. I will do what I will do, and it will all come to right at last. But how I will do it is my secret. Trust me and be not afraid. Amen. This morning, I want to encourage you. I know there is that thing that seems to have taken so long. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have declared. You have talked about it. You have said it. You have discussed about it. Yes, and it has not yet happened. This morning, I have a message for you. Keep on waiting. He will surely show up. Keep on waiting. The end will be better. The end will be greater. You will be greater. You will celebrate. And we shall come rejoicing. Celebrating the Lord's doing. This morning, I know there is that thing you are waiting upon the Lord. There are many. But maybe there is that number one. And I want you to stand up. And tell God, I'm waiting upon you on this. This one thing, Lord. I purpose this morning. Not to waver, because I know you so well. You know the character of God. He is changeless, he is ageless, he is able, he loves you, he is faithful, he cares for you. Open up your mouth and tell him that you wait upon him because he is dependable. Open up your mouth and in your own words, just tell God, I know you are waiting. I know you are about to give up. I know you had almost thought he didn't hear. And you are doubting his presence. Yes, tell him this morning that you know he has the good intentions and he will do it. That thing you have been praying for, that person, that spouse, that child, that job, that career, yes. You have been waiting about God. He has not yet come. Don't give up. It will be a tragedy to run ahead of God. You will not often affect yourself. Even your other family members, purpose to walk in God's time. Father, in Jesus' name, this morning we come to you. We know you are faithful. We know you are able. You know, we know you are here with us. And you have got good intentions for us. And this morning, dear Father, your sons and daughters are reminding you regarding that issue. They have waited for too long. But God, your timing is the best. I pray for that. You give them that assurance. You have had it. And you want them to continue waiting. Because you have confirmed. You will surely come. We honor you for your word. Because you have promised us this morning. That as we continue waiting upon you. 
you will renew our strength. Renew the strength of your sons and daughters this morning because you are faithful. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord bless you.